Hello, this is our, gonna be the unboxing of my new deck that I got for my Tacoma. I kind of wanted to do the unboxing here with you and also go over the deck that I purchased. Um, I've never had a Kenwood Exelon before and if you can see it is a Kenwood Exelon deck here. Uh, the great thing about Crutchfield is that you get these installation, you know, everything installation is included. So you get your wiring harness, you get your dash kits. You know, it's really nice that that kind of stuff is included. I'm going to put that down. Here is a Metra turbo wire harness here. Basically, that's going to get used to wire up the unit with the factory wiring. This is the deck itself. I just want to see if there's anything else here as far as a wiring harness or anything. Okay, it looks, looks like the good. deck here. Now, this is the Kenwood Exelon deck. And I chose this deck because it's an Exelon, so they're really built around a great audio experience. Now, granted, my Tacoma doesn't have amazing speakers or anything like that, but I just wanted a little bit of good music from this deck and I hope that's what I'm gonna get and also it was really reasonably priced around a hundred dollars for me and honestly you can't beat that it has Bluetooth it's got a full line display as you can see there it's got app decks for great sound quality from Android phones it's got Pandora iHeartRadio dual phone connection which is awesome music mix I don't know what that is Sirius XM radio a remote app that you can probably get it's got a USB interface, and um, here's some more information on it. It says actually up to five Bluetooth devices can be connected to the head unit at the same time. It's pretty cool. There's all the things that it has. Spanish menu for those who speak Spanish. Made in Indonesia. However, I'm assuming JVC Kenwood is based out of Yokohama, Japan. Cool to know. All right, so let's go ahead with the opening of the unit. I might need to pause the video and get like a razor or something to open up this box. So let me do that and I'll be right back. And if I didn't mention it before, this is the KDC X501. All right, so I opened just the uh, tape there that was in there so let's see what we got in here so first things first we have the Bluetooth mic right there if you can see that have the main wiring harness for the head unit nice let's see what else we have here okay so here we have the head unit itself you can see that pretty sweet The book, remote, and miscellaneous screws for the mounting. The nice thing about Crutchfield is that they provide you full instructions, literally, for your exact vehicle. It's in plastic, so let's go ahead and open the plastic and see what we have. So here's the unit out of the box. There's the face plate, albeit upside down. Let me flip it around. Actually a pretty good looking deck. It should look good in most vehicles. CD goes into there under that slot. To remove it, you hit this button on the side here. There's a reset button there, the faceplate electrics, and the deck itself. Now, I would say the deck has an overall very glossy black finish. I like it because it has a big volume knob, and um, everything's pretty well labeled on it. It is, you know, 
pretty small script, but it's okay. It does have NFC, which is nice to see. There's phone one, phone two on there for the Bluetooth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and install it. And after I've installed it, I'll come back and give you my review on how it sounds and what we're working with here. So my old deck that I'm working with here is a JVC unit. It's kind of old because it doesn't have any sort of modern technology like Bluetooth or anything like that or a USB port. It does have an aux in. It does play WMA and MP3 files, but other than that, it's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this with that new Kenwood Exelon unit. Okay, step one to removing your deck in a Toyota Tacoma anyway, is to go ahead and remove these things holding this power unit in here. You don't have to fully remove this and usually they have like a pin that you push in and it gets popped out but someone replaced them with these little pins on my truck here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the other one from the other side. Now you can see when I've removed these little two uh, plastic pins from each side, uh, the actual unit is just out here and it's wiggly. So now what we have to do is remove the ashtray. So let me go ahead and do that. And then behind the ashtray, there's sometimes a Phillips head screwdriver. If there isn't, you can bypass this part, but if there is, you have to remove them. Now we're gonna pull off the climate control selectors here. So once we've done that, we have to remove this trim plate. So I'm just gonna take one of my trim tools here and I'm gonna try to get a good grip on it so I can remove it. You kind of have to be careful with it because it is pretty fragile. You have to get a good grip on it. So I'm going to do this and I'll get back on the video here. And here you can see the trim plate removed. Kind of has some tabs that hold it in place. So just put a little bit of pressure like right on the bottom lip here and it generally now comes out. we're going to remove the two screws. One's here and one's on the and other I side. Believe this one's up here. You can see that. Sorry. Okay, once we remove that, we can basically start kind of start prying to pry at, at the bottom and on the sides, and then it slowly starts coming out. It's got tabs, and you'll feel them. See? Now you'll need to remove that yellow connector and that white connector, and completely remove the panel, as well as the power for the cigarette lighter down there. Once we're done, we're exposed with the radio. So now we have to remove the brackets that hold the radio on. There's a screw there, a screw there screw there and a screw there and then once we do that we can remove this radio this JVC the screws are now removed and you can see that the unit easily comes out now and so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the back and get to the wiring part okay so now we have the head unit completely removed we've removed um, the iPod connection which is the circular one right there that says iPod we removed the antenna and we removed the and main we're just power. Hook up all of our wires with a supplied wiring kit to the factory wiring harness and then plug it back in here and then go ahead and put it into the dashboard. We're also going to go ahead and transfer over the bracket system here because we're going to need these brackets because we're not actually going to use the sleeve that came with the unit right there. We're going to use the same bracket setup as just uh, those JVCs. two screws on each side and mount it um, right into there. Similarly for the... Uh, so what template. I'm doing here is I'm just going to go ahead and remove these um, screws here on the side. We're going to use this bracket for the Kenwood deck. So we just want to make sure that um, it's going to fit and it's going to line up correctly like this deck did. Um, but overall, you can see like doing this job is not difficult. I wouldn't be scared to install your own deck. Um, it's very simple and if you buy it from Crutchfield you get all the instructions and everything you know so you don't have to worry about what wire goes where or how to install it they have free tech support as well and I just want to put it out there that I do not work for Crutchfield this isn't sponsored by Crutchfield I just think they're a good company and I'm giving them their props um, but yeah so once we remove these four screws you can see that the head unit is finally free so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect this wiring harness back into the back of this head unit just to make sure I that I tell don't you, lose I'm it. really liking the way this thing looks. It's just got a sleek, sleek look to it. Um, if I put it 
next to this other deck here, you can see that it's just a very sleek look compared to the JVC. Sorry, let me get the camera better here. So this is the Kenwood. I mean, it's probably not a fair comparison either because one's an Exelon and one isn't, but there's the Kenwood. Let me flip this guy over so it's not upside down. There's the JVC. I would say the JVC is a good enough looking deck, you know, especially for an older one, and it's in good shape. I mean, it's literally in mint condition, but it doesn't have the features that I'm looking for, mainly the Bluetooth phone support and streaming music. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, brackets on to this deck okay, here. Okay, I've cleaned out the cubby holder, and I've lined up the radio with the openings on the side of the Kenwood, and I've aligned it with the front of the cubby holder so that it looks correct to me. So now I'm just going to go ahead and fasten in these uh, Phillips screws. So now the deck's all set to go. The storage pocket is on the bottom. It looks great and it's ready to go back into the dash after we finish the wiring. Okay guys, I finished up the wiring. It's really, really, really simple. Um, three things to note. I didn't use the steering wheel remote control because I don't have that. Um, I don't have a power antenna and I'm not going to mute, mute that out. Uh, basically everything else was color coded and I didn't even really need to read any instructions because all the colors from this factory harness matched up to the Metro harness that I received from Crutchfield. So I just connected the colors up together and went for it. But it's really simple. These purple and uh, green wires are generally rear speakers. The white wires and the gray wires are generally front speakers. Uh, the red is generally a 12 volt constant. Um, the yellow is a accessory constant. The black is a ground. And uh, blue is a power antenna, which I don't have. Uh, but again, it's very simple. Um, that's, I believe, the general gist of it. Um, I just wrapped it all together after soldering it to give it a really nice um, kind of factory look, I guess. And then um, basically all I have to do now is simply just plug it into the back of the deck here. I went ahead and there. connected all the connectors in the back. Everything looks great. So now I'm just screwing uh, those screws back in there. I have one down there in and one up here in. I'm just putting those screws back in and then putting the head unit back in and connecting the battery and hopefully everything should start up. Now, if this is your first time doing this, you might want to test it out and make sure it works before you put everything back together. But I'm pretty confident that I did it correctly, so I'm just going to go with it. And so the, the installation went smoothly, and the unit got installed into the vehicle no problem. Uh, just one thing to note on the Tacoma, it had another um, trim ring on the outside. I had to remove that to make sure that it fit correctly. However, after doing that, the fit was great. And I think it looks pretty decent in the dash here. It kind of flows with the look um, and looks pretty great to me. I personally enjoy the way this unit looks. Uh, as far as the installation, again, I thought it was pretty simple now, and straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key so you can see the head unit. Let me get a little bit closer here. And you can see that it turned on. Uh, one thing I can tell you that immediately is that the display is really bright and you can see it even in direct sunlight I've noticed which is something pretty important to me because I like looking down to see what song is playing or what time it is or who's calling uh, when I'm using the Bluetooth and that really helps. I also have an Android phone and I've noticed that the aptX uh, does turn on when I'm streaming Bluetooth and makes everything sound really really nice. Uh, so that's definitely another benefit that I've noticed about that. As far as the uh, menu system and everything else, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, just a quick note, the CD uh, player slot is right here, which is underneath this little cover here, which I think is a nice touch. It keeps the unit looking clean and doesn't allow a lot of dust to get into that CD area there. So as for the different settings, you basically push this button in and then it goes into the function. So like we could go to display, tuner settings, Bluetooth mode, remote app, clock, demo mode, display again. Um, and within these menus, there's other menus and different things that you can do to 
switch the settings and other things. Uh, so for example, if you go into display, you can use, you can choose your color. Um, you can do all zones, zone one, zone uh, or zone two. Um, and basically zone one is like these buttons on, on this side and then zone two is the bottom area. So what I've done is I actually have it under orange red, which really matches the color of my Tacoma at night. Uh, so when the dash is illuminated, it has kind of a reddish orange glow, which really is very similar to this orange red on this Kenwood. But if you have a different color on your vehicle, there's like an orange one, there's an orange two, there's a yellow. I'm just going to go through these colors so you can see them. Okay, so that just uh, shows that we have gone ahead and decided to go with the orange for the all zones there. And I'm not going to change the other zones, but just know that you can have different colors on the unit if you so choose to at the same time. So then going back, we can go into dimmer, brightness, brightness on all zones. Dimmer. I have it at level 31, which is the brightest. But if you do want to bring it down, it does get very dark. I like it again bright. You might not like it like that. Then zone 2, you can change the zones, which I think is pretty cool. Text scroll, color select, all that stuff, which is really nice. Uh, then you have the tuner setting. So it has auto memory, all these different things that you can do f with that. I won't get into that. Um, there's Bluetooth mode, so you can choose different phones because this has dual phone support, which, again, is a nice thing. You can do a lot of things with the Bluetooth. Very easy to use. If you wanted to pair Bluetooth, you would just go into the Bluetooth mode and add the phone. Again, very easy to do that. Then there's a clock, demo mode, display. Uh, now, if you want to change the settings for the music that you're listening to, you hit the audio button. And then you go into audio control. So you have subwoofer level, you have manual EQ, preset EQ, bass boost, you know, loudness and things like that. And I've I'm not going to go into these because I have it set for my vehicle, but just know that there's so many different adjustments, and I don't know if it's because it's an Exelon deck or not, but there's a ton of different adjustments that you can make, including speaker size, and if you want the sound uh, coming from like a feeling of the bottom, middle, or top area of the vehicle, which is really cool. So really, there's so many settings. Um, as far as how it sounds, part of Wales, it sounds super clear. Refugees. I can tell you that Activists it sounds a lot adopted. more clear than the other JVC head unit that I had in here. It uh, produces a lot sharper sound, I would say. It's a lot more clear, bright, focused, loud. Um, and also, it makes the factory speakers in here sound so much better than they did previously. It definitely is a massive, massive upgrade, and I'm really glad I went with the Exelon because they have a focus on sound quality, and I think you can definitely tell because the difference between the old JVC deck and this Kenwood is night it's and day, It's definitely one literally. of the best-sounding decks I've ever purchased, and I've purchased several in my lifetime. And so if you, we go to like uh, something else like Pop, you can see um, it's, it's a commercial now, but it's going to be... It's going to be really hard for you to tell how this sounds, but I can tell you it sounds amazing, and I'm really happy, happy with my purchase. Uh, so double happy with my purchase there. Again, I've also set up the... Um, I've also set up the USB port to come out of the glove box, and I have a cable here for my Android. It charges and connects to the deck no problem. That was another nice feature that I enjoy about this tech. Um, other than the great sound quality and ease of use, it's really easy to use. I feel like it has great sound, and if you do decide to get it, uh, get it from Crutchfield. They're great guys. I paid like around $100 for this, maybe $105, somewhere around there. And the value is great because you get a full installation kit, you get the Crutchfield instructions, you get their tech support. I don't work for Crutchfield. They didn't endorse this. They didn't sponsor this. I just feel like they're a great company. Again, this is my review of my Kenwood Exelon X501, KDC X501. It's a great deck. I highly re recommend it. It sounds amazing, and it fits really nicely with 
the interior of my Tacoma and it sounds great.